Love never fails. Listen. And the love of God, look. A mother lays down her life for her children. Amen. And what did Jesus do for us? He said, greater love hath no man than this, than a brother lay down his life. Listen, a friend lays down his life for his friend. That's what moms do. When you, when you birth a child, it's no longer about mom no more. It's about them babies. You know, my moms went on to be with the Lord a few years ago. And then my mom's mom, my, my granny. So I had two mamas in my life. And I, you know, I can't, I can't fathom. I didn't, I don't think I told him. If you still got your mama, make sure you tell him you love him. Because you can't tell him that enough. Not just on Mother's Day. Every day. I don't care if you're grown and you're 50 years old. You still got your mama. Tell her. Let her know how much you love her, okay? God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's an honor to be here today. I thank every one of you for being here. And first of all, I'd like to say this is the day that the Lord hath made, and yeah. we will, will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. You know, I come here today, and I had all, all week I had a, uh, God had given me a scripture, and I've been working on that all week and, and studying on it. And, and uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking around me, and I'm saying, hmm, my message is salvation and healing, and I don't think anybody in here needs salvation. Well, when Terry stood up, this is how important these testimonies are. When Brother Terry stood up and uh, talked about salvation and stuff, I said, right on. You know, I'm thinking... <laughs> Wow, and that just stirred something in my spirit, you know, and that released my doubt. I'm thinking, did I miss it, God? Because, you know, I thought that was you telling me that, but I don't know. And usually, you know, lots of times I get up here and God changes it anyway. So, you know, that's no big surprise. Amen? Amen. 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 So I want to thank everybody for being here. And I got a testimony about uh, uh, my son and... Um, I had, I've got four girls and I had one son and he, he passed away a few years ago. He was 52 years old. He was a, uh, he was a heroin dealer, a drug addict, and uh, you name it. He, w he was big time into drugs. But he got real sick and he went in the hospital and me and another preacher woman went to see him and he got delivered from heroin right there in the hospital and never had no withdrawals or nothing. You know, later on he ripped and he went in a nursing home and he never did recover. But when he was first in a, a, a nursing home, he was teaching. He was teaching people in a nursing home. And uh, he led a lot of people to the Lord. And uh, then he... Uh, Died one night, they didn't know. I guess it was a blood clot or a silent heart attack or something. But you know, first thing, and I'm not bragging on me, this is how you have to lean on God. When my granddaughter called me and told me, Mama, Dad just passed away, and my heart just broke. But I lifted my hand and I said, Praise you anyway, God. You know, we've got to praise him in the bad times. And he yeah, helped me through yeah, it. Man. He's oh, still helping man. me, you know, because I know that my son is in a better place than we are. And I can rejoice with him for being there. But what I'm getting around to, he reminded me so much of that when we're sitting right over there. <laughs> he reminded me so much of Mike because he had this great sense of humor. And he could get up here and, you know, he preached a few times at church that I went to, and he could have me laughing, you know. So I thank God. I thank God for the people that he's put me with. I know God brought me here, and I thank him for that. And today I wanted to tell you, if you're worried about anything, and God keeps dropping this into my spirit, and this is for the whole church, you know, it's just a few words. God's got it. God's got it. I keep I keep hearing that. God's got it. And when I usually when I speak to somebody and pray over them, I'll say, God's got it. Because he's got it. You know, he's got it. He done it all. He's already done it all. He went, you know, uh, that's my scripture today. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted of God, and of 
you know, he w we accused him, not we, but, you know, people accuse him. Well, he must have done something wrong. That's what they're saying there. He must have done something wrong, but for God to strike him down like that, and that's the way they'll do to us today. If something bad happens to a Christian, well, they got to have done something wrong. They have sinned or done something wrong or, or that wouldn't have happened. But that's not true. Like Mike said, it brings on the just and the injustice alike. And I'm getting straight here, but let's go back. But he was wounded for our transgressions. That's our sins. He was wounded for he took he took a wound for our sins. You know, he when he uh when they opened up his rib, belly, wherever they stabbed him, blood and water poured out. That was for our sins. He did that for me, you know. And and I didn't have to, I didn't have to go to that cross. Because he took it for me. He took my sins to that cross. And I want to thank him today. For he took my sins. My transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with, with his stripes. We are healed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We are healed. Yes. And that's what I, I've been studying a lot about healing and stuff. And, and we've already got it. All we have to do is step out and receive it. Amen. Yeah. God has done, God done it all. You know, he, 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 that cross was so heavy. He bore the cross up that hill and then he hung on that cross. Think about it. Everyone in here and everyone in this entire world, not just the United States, but also all over this world, he bore our sins. You know how heavy sin gets? You know how, how uh, bound down with sin you get? You just can't carry it no more. What about carrying everybody's sin and hanging that long on the cross and dying for my sins? I want, you know, let's just give him some praise yeah. today. You know, God just sent his son because he loved us. Jesus carried it out because he loved us. You know, there was many times, you know, I'm sure he got discouraged on his walk down here. I'm sure he did because he's looking around and sometimes we get discouraged. We see what everybody's doing and we're trying to do our best and they're still not listening, not paying attention. Jesus might have had some of them same feelings, but he loved us. He had the compassion. He had compassion. And he had faith. Yeah. Faith. He was man like me and you. He was he was he walked in this fleshly body. The only thing different is he knew. He knew who he was in Christ Jesus. He knew who he was in God. Amen. He knew he was the son of God. You know, I don't know if he always knew it when he was first born. I don't know. But he knew he was the son of God. And I think today I was thinking about his his mother. I said, you know, it's, it's good to be a mother. It's one of the most blessings on this earth is to be a mother. You know, it's an honor that God chose you to raise some of his children. Amen. God chose us. He chose me to raise mine. He chose you to raise yours. It's such an honor, but it also is such a sorrow. It is a heartbreak. You don't know heartbreak until you have children. Until something happens to one of your children, you know, you don't know the heartbreak. And I think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, when he came to this world, you know, she kind of knew. You know, she, she knew who he was. She knew who he was, but she really didn't know what she was going to have to go through. You know, and I, I want to thank all the mothers today, but I want to thank the Lord. And I want to tell you how to receive all of this. All you have to do today is come to the Lord. I, I look around me and I see that everybody in here is probably saved. But we're not so saved that we don't need nothing from God. You know, sometimes it's hard. You, you try to get a Christian to come to the altar. And I've seen places where you couldn't pray them up if you had a crowbar. Amen. They'll sit there and you can, you can beg the church to come and pray. Come and pray. 
The church is the one that should be on the altar. I believe the church should be here. If the church is here praying, the people is going to feel the conviction of the Lord. And then the sinners in the house, they're going to come and pray. I used that when I first got saved. That was one thing I did all the time. I kept running to the altar and praying. I'm thinking, people are going to think I'm the biggest sinner in the world. But I had that leading, that calling on me to go pray. And I've seen people, and I'm not bragging on me, it's obey God and he'll do the work. Yeah. When you come, if God is pushing you to come, pulling you, tugging you to come and pray, come and pray no matter if you don't know what it is. Because I've seen people come and get saved just by me or somebody else going to the altar and praying. Some Christian just going there and open the way because you know when you're a sinner, it's hard to make that first step. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're wanting to make that first step, but you're ashamed of the what people will think. Yeah. But if you've seen somebody else going to the altar and you know that they're a Christian, you know, well, they ain't going to know what I've done if I go. You know, so it opens doors. And uh, I'm way off track of what I've been studying on, but I like to just obey God and I loose my tongue to the Holy Ghost and let the Holy yes. Ghost lead me wherever the Holy Ghost wants me to go. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. It's not when I get up here. It's not about me because uh, before I get up here, I don't really want to get up here. But when I get, when I'm sitting there and somebody else gets me stirred up, I can't wait to get my hands on the mic. I don't want to be like I'm not. But, but I've got that stirring in me, you know. And we all need to get stirred up. God, God's trying to stir up all of his people. But we need to be ready and willing. We need to be willing to step, step out. You know, when I was called to preach, and I wrestled with it for a long time, probably years and years, but I asked God, God, why do I want to preach? You know, I had that burning desire to preach the word, and I'm a woman, and actually I just come out of the Baptist church, and you know how that is, but anyway, <laughs> I'm a woman, and I'm burning inside, and I'm thinking, I, I went to hear every woman I could, and uh, I said, God, why do I want to preach? And then he, he wouldn't leave. One day I was, in the, I was in the bathroom. That's where I usually do most of my praying back in the day. But anyway, and I said, God, what if I get up there and make a mistake? He said, you will. <laughs> but I'll be with you. You know, God, God tells you, he, you will. You will not be perfect just because you're called to preach and you get a hold of the mic don't mean that something ain't going to come out of your mouth that's going to offend somebody or something. I mean, I have uh, uh, mispronounced words that sound dirty before, you know, and that is embarrassing, you know. It is when you pronounce the word of God and, and you know it as soon as it comes out of your mouth, but... It's like, oh my gosh. And, I, you know, I'm kind of going to laugh, but not to me. It's not funny. But I want to thank God for all he does for each and every one of us. And all we have to do is just obey his voice. You know, there's many. I believe everybody, and, and uh, I don't believe I'm wrong. I think everybody's got some kind of calling on their life. It may not be standing up here preaching. It may not be teaching. It may not be singing. But he had something, everything, everything in God's kingdom has a purpose. You know, it's like she's trying to get people to clean the church. That was the first thing I started out doing. I loved it. I was so thankful that I was able to get down on my knees. I was younger then and scrub the bathroom floors. And I took a toothbrush and scrubbed them little, you know, things that get all that dirt in. And I was just rejoicing because I thought, I'm doing this for God. I'm doing this for my father. And there is many people out here that's not able to do what I'm doing, you know? There's people in wheelchairs that would give anything if they could get down and clean that floor, if they could do any little thing for God. There's some of you in here right now that may not be able to do that. But you give anything. you give anything if you was able to do what God, these healthy people that we take our health, we take everything from God for granted. Granted. But God is a good God. He loves each and every one of us, whether we do anything or not. But it is a joy to step out and do something for the Lord, to be a part of the family. 
You know, just because you might be the toenail don't mean you ain't important. You take your toenail off and you try to walk in a pair of shoes and see how it feels. Amen. You're important. Everybody's important to the house of God. Every one of us. All right. Romans 4, 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification? He was raised up to justify us. We couldn't, we couldn't justify ourselves. The law couldn't justify us. The, the cruci crucifying animals, sacrificing animals, they couldn't justify us. It would take care of it for a little bit, but it was not justified. We're still sinners. Jesus Christ died that we could have life and have it more abundantly. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. He died for the sins of the world. And that's the only justification we'll ever have is the blood of Jesus Christ. I know some, I hear people, and they might see me on Facebook, but nah, they probably wouldn't watch me anyway. But I've heard people say, oh, I hope, and these, these people have been Christians for 40, 50, longer than me. I hope I go, I'm good enough to make it in. They're supposed to be saved, and I've cried. I've cried when I've heard them get down and pray that they'd be good enough. Get down at the altar and pray and beg and beg and plead and cry with God. I, I, I actually broke my heart. And I would get so aggravated to hear people say, I hope I'm good enough. I hope I make it in. Well, I'll tell you what the Bible says. If there's hope in this world, if there's only hope in this world, you're of all men most miserable. Amen. Amen. And God said he wants our joy to be full. Yeah. I yes. would that your joy, you would prosper and be in good health. Amen. 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 And your joy would be full. God wants us to prosper. He wants us to be in good health. And he wants our joy to be full. Because we got a God that he loved us enough to die on that cross. He's going to love us enough to make it possible for me to get in without, without my flesh. You know, I can't depend on my goodness. I can't depend because I'm going to fail him. I'm going to fail him. But he's not going to fail me. His blood is what's going to be. He says we're justified by uh, the word of our testament, the blood of Jesus Christ, and the word of our testimony. That's, that's what justifies it's not enough. I can't be good enough. I'll never be good enough to go to heaven. But thank God Jesus Christ is. He did it for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, are you a whosoever? Everybody is a whosoever. Whosoever can believe in him. Who's, uh, okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we stand before the throne of God, well, if we didn't give our life to Jesus Christ, we have no excuse. Right there it is. Whosoever will. Whosoever will can come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if there's anybody in here that is not where they should be, not where they want to be, you know, we are none where we want to be, so we should be asking God, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me. I want you. I'm hungry. I remember the other day I was down in the basement praying, and the and, uh, Holy Ghost was praying, and I, I got a word that says, I crave you. You know, I didn't, I wasn't feeling the Spirit of God. But I crave you, I crave you. And I just started praying that, Lord, I crave you, I crave you, I crave you. You know, I want my cravings to be on Jesus, not on the things of this world, not on what money can buy, not on a, a pretty home or, you know, I want my cravings to be Jesus. I want my, I want to be so full of God that when I, when I walk out, I want to be like Peter. I want to be like Paul, you know, I don't want to go through all the stuff they did, but I want to be like Peter. I want to be like Paul. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost that when I walk by a sick person, a cripple, a lame, a sinner, that they'll come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They'll be saved and they'll be sanctified and they'll get filled with the Holy Ghost and then I can teach them how I got it when I get it. I can tell them how I got it and they can get it. We'll all ask him what God wants to 
move on his children. We just got to get hungry. Get hungry, get hungry, get hungry. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was at the altar praying at a church in Kentucky. Hallelujah. And I've been praying a long time over this. And I'm saying, God, why ain't we seeing miracles like they did the uh, the disciples did, the apostles did. Why are we not seeing that, Lord? And I had a vision while I was on my knees in that church. And uh, I saw hands lifted up all over. Hands, just multitudes of people praising the Lord. And he said, teach my people to praise me. When my people, when my people learn to praise me, learn to lift up my name, hallelujah, then I will move. Amen. And then I will heal your land, hallelujah. Yeah. God yeah. wants to heal our land. He wants to heal our body. He wants to heal our children. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We serve a great big God. He's a God that will not fail us. He is a God that can't fail. When he says it, it becomes, it exists. Amen. Yeah. If he says you're not sitting there, you're not sitting there. But he says you're sitting there, you're there. Amen. If he says I want you down there, you better go. Amen. And we, if God tells you to go somewhere, you better go. Amen. We obey the voice of the Lord. God is calling of his people to step out and step up. Hallelujah. And right now I'll tell you what. I want I want the church, hallelujah, to get together and let's pray for more boldness. Hallelujah. Yes. That we'll all have more boldness. I know I can use some more boldness myself. Amen. You know, we can be bold. We don't just have to have a mic in our hand to get bold. We can get bold out there in Walmart or Goodwill or wherever you do your shopping. We need to get more bold. Go through our singing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory, glory, glory. I remember one time way back when I was first saved, there was a man in the, in the store where I went, and I was walking behind him, and I heard him, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then on the upper he would say, For if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe you in your heart that God raised his head, from the dead, then you shall be saved. And I'm saying, God, that man must be crazy. That man was crazy for Jesus. Amen. 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 That man, I was a new Christian then. I didn't understand it. But I understand now. Give me that boldness, Lord. Yeah. Give me that yes, boldness. Lord. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care if the world thinks I'm crazy. Hallelujah. I'll be crazy for Jesus. I had a pastor one time. He said, it don't mean, uh, <clears throat> it don't matter how screwed up you're on, you are as long as you're screwed to the right bolt. Amen? Amen? So just get on that bolt and on that boat and ride it out for Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He will not fail us. He don't leave us. We sometimes stray away and I have gotten in cold spots myself where I thought I was nothing or nobody. I just wanted to go into a church and hide. Does anybody ever want to go into a church and just hide out? They don't know I preach there, so they're not gonna they're not gonna ask me to preach. But I guarantee you, no matter where you go and try to hide, somebody knows you, somebody there is gonna point you out. Amen. Amen. You can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. If God's got a calling on your life, I would advise you to step up. Amen. Sometimes you have to sit back and listen. You know, sometimes you you got to be learned. You, you got to be taught before you step out. You got to know the Word of God, study to show yourself approved right. for every good work, and then get up and work. Amen. Just work, no matter what it is. Just work. Hallelujah. Does anybody need prayer today? I believe God's here. I believe God is going to perform miracles here today. I feel that God will perform miracles, not us, not me, not the, the brother pastors here, but God. Amen. God is your healer. God is wanting to heal. God wants to heal somebody today because I studied on healing and I know God gave it to me. So God is wanting to heal somebody. Do you want a healing today? Do you believe that God wants to heal you today? If you, got, if you believe and you come forth, hallelujah, by faith, God will do a miracle in your life. I believe in a miracle working God, hallelujah. We serve a great big God, a miracle working God, and I know there's somebody in here that could use a miracle. Amen. Amen. Yes. Anybody want to cook here?
Yes, you can give uh, the rest of the altar call, or you can stand up here and, and pray for the sick or the hurting. No matter what's wrong with you today, no matter what it is, if you're just down and, and discouraged or whatever it is, God's got it. Amen. God's got it. God is waiting for you. command you to let it go of my child. You cannot have her. Oh, she's been bought by the blood of Jesus. Painful. Rest. 